today is hump day. <laughs> Sorry guys, I had to do it. I had to do that one time. Splendiferous. Okay? Splendiferous. You should make that up. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Friday, everyone. I am Terrence Dixon here at the Digital 12 News Now Center. Hope your day is going pretty well. As you know today, or if you didn't know, today is a first alert weather day. You know, what I can tell you guys to do is to make sure you download the NBC 12 uh, weather app so that way you can stay up to date. But their newest attraction allows you to fulfill that need for speed. Your love for the game is what? Is it this small or is it this big? This big. Our John Hood actually went down to RIC yesterday to catch up with several um, several travelers, and he's going to have the latest on, you know, what people thought about the mask mandate being dropped. And before I play that story, I also want to hear from you guys in the comments section as well. You know, drop a comment. Let me know. They're encouraging people to call in now and to place their to-go orders instead of waiting until the big game day. United, Delta, American, Southwest, and Alaska Airlines uh, have announced that masks are now optional on planes. Amtrak is also no longer requiring masks on trains, and Uber is no longer requiring riders or drivers to wear a mask. However, you probably still want to pack a mask just in case. Hello to Michelle, hello to Virginia, hello to Donna, Maria, Stacy, Asia, Karen, Stephen, Connie, Joe. Wow, there's a lot of people checking in today. Carl, thank you everyone for checking in. Every day in the Highlands community, you'll find retired veteran Jim Glacier. The walk every evening at around 7.30. Strolling the neighborhood. I start here, go up Sea View, then up to Highland Glen, and walk around the block. Completing his mile walk to stay in shape. I enjoy seeing the neighbors, and of course I love the neighborhood. But during one particular walk. Say hi to everybody. While talking to a neighbor, something unusual happened. As I turn to go home, my head got very light. Glacier fainted just feet away from that neighbor. And the next thing you know, I'll wake up inside an ambulance. My heart has just stopped. It's called ventricular tachycardia. It wasn't a heart attack. It was just like a short circuit in the electrical system. Survival rate of uh, something VTAC like this is eight to 10% outside of a hospital environment. Had I made it like up to here, you know, 100 yards away, I would have been dead. But that neighbor, Jose Acoli, knew instantly what to do. And I put these two fingers around close to his neck, and there was no pulse at all. And I said, see, I said, something was not right. Coley jumped into action, performing CPR. And I was pumping, I was pumping, I was pumping. For 25 minutes, Coley pumped away while he instructed another neighbor to call 911. And I kept pumping again, I kept pumping again, I kept pumping again. Still, there was no pulse. Once the ambulance arrived, EMTs used a defibrillator on Glacier. And then when they shocked him, First time, there was nothing. The guy said, no, it's nothing. Then they shocked him again, there was nothing. Immediately, Coley sprung back into action and helped with compressions. So I said, well, shucks, we got to keep pumping. Kept pumping and kept pumping, and the guy was looking at me like I was crazy. I'm like, man, come on, we got to keep pumping. The paramedics then shot Glacier a third time and still nothing. Moments later, another crew came to assist, and eventually Glacier came too. When they put him in the back of the rescue squad, I saw him do like this right here. He grabbed the machine. I said, oh, good, he's, he's, he's back. At the hospital, Glacier received a pacemaker. Oh, I just kept praying. I said, Lord, you know, he's all in your hands. I just thank God that he's, you know, I was here at the right time. For them to step up the way they did, you know, what do you say about that? I say, thank you, God. I'm also grateful I didn't make it halfway home. Back on his feet again, Glacier is thankful for all the hands that helped him, especially Coley's, because now he's able to walk his beloved neighborhood again. If I had to do it all over again, I'll do it again. So you mean a lot to me, man. He'll tell you. Likewise. But take care of yourself, because I don't want to run across that situation again. Yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> on your side, Terrence Dixon, NBC 12. A lot of kids live for sports. But for Zon Delp, the, shot. the game of basketball is his first love. Your love for the game is what? Is it this small or is it this big? This big. Azan's heart is as big as it comes. Go, 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 go. But his height doesn't match it. Azan is a seven-year-old from Verina who has the height and the body of a four-year-old. Did they pick on you because you're smaller? Mm -hmm. While that may be the case, Azan still doesn't let that stop him. It's like fuel to his fires. He trains harder, so when moments like this happen, <laughs> it's no fluke. And he came down and he pulled up from the volleyball line, not even the three-point line. In the Verina Rec League, Azan is known as the little Steph Curry. What's your favorite shot to take? The three-point line. The three-pointer. 
And Azan gets the name because he's shooting behind the volleyball line on the regular, like his favorite player, Steph Curry. He's small like me, and he can make it. He does it at practice, so it's not like he just coming out here doing something that we didn't work on. With me being a competitive person, I decided to put his title to the test. Go. So I used to play basketball too, and I was a pretty good shooter. You think you could beat me? Bring it. And oh boy, did he bring it. He beat me twice. The first time, I took him for granted. And well, the second, you can see what happened. On your side, Terrence Dixon. That's twice. NBC 12. There was no chance of me walking ever again. Now I felt like my life was over. Navy veteran Malik Jones walks every day on the path of fate. Several years ago, he had an accidental gunshot wound to the head, which caused him to be in a coma for several weeks. And I asked the nurse, I was like, um, what am I doing here? Like, why am I here? Where'd I come from? Jones had no recognition of that night. He said he thought he fell asleep on the job as he served as a hospital corpsman while in the Navy. I woke up in the hospital and I thought I was at work. In three years, he spent over 10 months in the hospital and underwent five brain surgeries. They said I'll be in a wheelchair. Best case, I have to use a cane forever. They don't know what they're talking about. Determined to recover, Jones overcame paralysis on the entire left side of his body and fought every day in rehab with one thing on his mind, family. I went to the Navy to be like an example for them, so I, I wasn't going to let me get hurt stop that. After making so much progress, fighting to be an example for his family, COVID-19 put a stop to his therapy. All my appointments got canceled, all my extracurricular stuff got canceled. So um, I was just in the house. Jones says it was tough not having his therapist around, helping him exercise. So he decided to take matters into his own hands and started his own therapy. I decided that I'm about to start walking every morning. Step by step, Jones started to regain his confidence back as he continued his journey. I kept pushing forward, trying to get my uh, fitness back up. Now, Jones is living on his own in Richmond, working and doing all the things his doctors thought he would never be able to do again. But I'm walking better than other people who don't even have this disability. I'm walking four miles a day, so I'm blessed. Now Malik is currently taking classes at Virginia Union University, but says once he graduates, he wants to start a brain injury summer camp for adults who are dealing with depression. On your side, Terrence Dixon, NBC 12.